Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Crossfire Faith and Gaming for our Advent devotionals. My name is the Reverend David Petty, and I am one of your co-hosts. I'm joined by my other co-host, Russ Dornish. Thanks, Dave. Um, before we get started on our next Advent devotion, this being the last week of Advent, we're going to be going over peace. Just want to do a few housekeeping things, making sure that if you're following us and listening to these, that you also follow us on all social media platforms. We do post throughout the week on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of it, YouTube. Um, so make sure you guys are following it. Another cool thing, a little bit of sneak peek news. Uh, as you guys can tell, I am wearing a new Crossfire hat. Dave is wearing a Crossfire hat, um, which these hats and some other merch is going to be available soon, hopefully by the uh, start of the new year, for you guys to purchase and support Crossfire. Um, we've got a really cool shirt uh, that's coming, so be on the lookout for that and make sure you guys uh, follow us on all those social media platforms so you know when our merch drops. Now, let's get into our first, uh, or let's get into the final Advent message, which is over peace. Dave, what is our verse for today? Sure thing. Our verse comes from John 14, 25 through 27. And it says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. So when we were trying to figure out, okay, what game should we really talk about when it comes to peace? Obviously, we really could have talked about any video game because... In all honesty, the protagonist in every game is looking to find some kind of peace, whether it's personally, whether it's world peace, trying to save the world, save a community, save a people, all of that. But one thing stuck out to me and stuck out to Dave as well, um, and it's in one of our favorite games, which is the God of War series and the newest God of War game that came out for the PlayStation 4 recently. Now, in this game, a quick overview is Kratos is, a, is the God of War. Um, and he is living technically in Norse mythology in the new game. And within the Norse mythology, he's able to find a new wife and kind of start a new life away from the Greek history that he comes from and being called the God of War. Um, so he marries a, a, a woman warrior, and then he has a son. Now, his relationship with his family and his son after they have the child isn't great. Kratos is always gone. He doesn't spend time with the kid. Well... The sad news, and again, this isn't really spoilers because this happens right at the beginning of the game, but um, his wife is going to die. She knows she's going to die. So she tells Kratos and Atreus that they need to take her ashes up to the tallest mountain in the, the area, and that is where they need to spread her ashes, and it's the one thing she has them promise her. The thing that they don't realize is she's actually set this up. She set this up to be a much difficult, much more difficult task. And then it sets off on this story of Atreus, Kratos' son, and Kratos traveling to spread her ashes and coming closer. So in essence, what is happening in this story is his wife knows that Kratos is not going to be able to really function after she's gone. And so she gives him this piece of peace, uh, this piece, which is her son, his son. And it's this ability to find out that he has this special thing that she's left behind for him that can help him be calm, that can help him just find happiness in a place where he wouldn't have done it otherwise. And it's kind of interesting as the story starts, he's very cold and very closed off to his son. And as they go through this journey together, he gets closer and closer to him. And at the end, he's finally able to find that peace that peace that his wife so desperately wanted him to find away from his past and to connect with his son. Um, and that is the kind of where we want to go today with the, the talk of peace and this verse here in John. Um, David, how would you kind of bring this together and um, combine the two and kind of connect them? Yeah, one thing that stuck out to me uh, when we started talking about peace was this concept of, you know, what is biblical scriptural peace? Uh, you know, are we talking world peace? Are we talking inner peace? Are we talking, you know, some sort of other peace, you know, peace and love, you know, like the 1960s or I don't know. Um, so we're talking about the, the type of peace that's in scripture, which is often the Hebrew concept of shalom. Uh, and one author described it as the realm where chaos is not allowed to enter. So when we think about a a shalom, right? And wishing shalom to somebody, you know, as a blessing, 
what we're saying to them is, you know, I wish you a type of peace that is so deep and that is so visceral um, that you are in a place, a realm where there will not be chaos. Right. And so I think for for Kratos, right, there's a lot of uh, chaos externally. There's a lot of chaos internally. There's a lot of chaos between him and his son, a lot of angst there. Uh, and so I think for him, it's this journey of finding peace and eventually being able to find, you know, literally uh, externally and internally a realm where chaos can't enter. Um, so that's why we really started thinking about God of War. And I, I also thought about some other games, but, you know, thinking about some of those games where your whole goal is to try to fend off chaos and instead of chaos, instead of this discord, instead of the, the disruption that's happening because of the evil in the world that you're playing in, trying to find that peace that, you know, passes, uh, as scripture says, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Um, but I think the peace that we can understand as the lack of um, chaos or evil or strife. So that was what came to my mind when I started thinking about peace and, and God of war and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. There's so many different examples of peace in video games. And we just hope that this Christmas season that you are able to, your family, yourself are able to find the peace that we need during these troubling times, during these very difficult times. Um, and again, we appreciate you guys for following along and coming along with us during this Advent season. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us out, um, and then we'll kind of wrap things up uh, for this Advent season. Again, we appreciate you so much for watching these videos or listening. Um, and yeah, just come with me now in a time of prayer. Uh, Father God, uh, we just thank you so much for our ability to connect with each other during these times, God. And we just thank you so much for this wonderful Advent season of just the preparation of your coming, God, in this season. And we just ask that that you bless all of our times during Christmas and all of our families and um, just keeping us safe and, and, and being able to just continue um, spreading your message with everybody, God. And we just thank you so much in your son's name. Amen. Amen. So we will be returning uh, with some more podcast episodes. We don't have an exact plan yet, so just stay tuned on our social media channels uh, for when we announce when we're going to come back with our regular podcast uh, that we would do every couple of weeks. Um, but stay tuned for those announcements. Also, we probably won't see you between now and Christmas. So have a Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Holidays, and have a Happy New Year. And I hope that 2021, uh, for our sake, and you know, thinking about games like, I don't know, Cyberpunk, Hopefully 2021 is going to be better for all of us than 2020 has been uh, in every way possible. So we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas and God bless. God bless you guys. Frostbite.